This is Smart Pizza, and in today's hour-long episode, I'll show you some amazing and frightening animal moments that have been caught on camera. In this episode, you'll see the most dangerous birds on the planet, capable of attacking even a lion, animals turning into real zombies, a dog volleyball player, a hard-working monkey, and other genius animal moments. We'll also get a closer look at the structure of the lion's pride and learn about the funeral customs of some animals. Let's start with zombie insects, shall we? Grasshopper Unfortunately, grasshoppers very often fall prey to twisted wing insects. They resemble flies in appearance and reproduce by parasitizing in grasshoppers. The female penetrates the body and releases pheromones, substances that attract males. Males fertilize females while the grasshopper is almost paralyzed. It can't move and is completely defenseless against the parasites. The larvae leave the grasshopper's body and spread into its habitat, after which they grow and infect new individuals. Crickets Crickets also often become victims of parasites, but other parasites, horsehair worms. Outwardly, horsehair worms look like revived hair. The female horsehair worm lays eggs in rivers and they're often eaten by the larvae of mayflies. However, the egg doesn't die in the womb of the larva. It remains inside until the larva transformed into a full-fledged individual and leaves the river. Already on land, these flies fall prey to crickets, which eat them along with horsehair worms' eggs. The larva feeds on the fats contained in the cricket's body for a month, after which it grows and releases toxin that affects the cricket's brain in a special way, turning it into a zombie. It makes it seek out a body of water and follow it to it, which a healthy cricket would never do. As soon as the cricket falls into the water, the worm leaves its body. Interestingly, the cricket doesn't die but gets out of the water onto dry land and continues to live its life, so it turns into a zombie only temporarily. Sukanai putris These snails live in the Palearctic. They spend most of their time in the thickets of grass where there are a lot of moisture, but their fate is unenviable. Very often, they're attacked by the parasite called Leucochloridium paradoxum. It's a flatworm belonging to the class of Digini. These worms use snails as intermediate hosts and then enter the body of birds and continue to parasitize them. The circle, in fact, is closed and can last a very long time. Snails become infected through the feces of infected birds. Once in the snail's body, the Leucochloridium paradoxum larva affects its central nervous system. The snail begins to exhibit unusual behavior, climbing high into trees and venturing out into open, sunlit areas. This makes it vulnerable to birds, which is what the parasite seeks. It drills a hole in the snail's head or penetrates its tentacles and thus attracts birds, which eats the snail and becomes infected. Another parasite, the ruthless wasp, is no less cruel to its host. Stay tuned to find out how these wasps turn spiders into their slaves and to see other animals that can become zombies. Spiders It's not uncommon for spiders to become preys and, in fact, slaves of a special kind of wasp which lays its larva on the abdomen of spiders and eventually gains complete control over their behavior. The larvae that hatch remain on the spider's body and poison it with their venom, which acts directly on the brain. It doesn't kill the spider, but it makes it controllable. The infected spider doesn't lose its ability to weave a web, but now it weaves it not for itself but for the larvae and in such a way that a cocoon is obtained. In addition, larvae force spiders to weave cocoons so that they reflect ultraviolet radiation and become invisible to birds and other predators. Scientists have also found that the threads of spider webs that spiders weave for larvae are 40 times stronger than the threads of webs they normally weave for themselves so they're more durable and remain strong until the wasp reaches maturity. Eventually, it eats the spider alive. European Pine Sawfly This caterpillar lives a fairly peaceful life, but everything changes as soon as it becomes infected with baculovirus. This virus affects the hormonal system and can completely control the caterpillar's behavior. It suppresses the organism, as a result of which the caterpillar loses the ability to use its own judgment and turns into a zombie. The virus affects the caterpillar's coloration, causes tissue decomposition, stress, and lethargy. The movements are slowed or stopped altogether, and the caterpillar stops eating. 
before it dies from the effects of the virus, the caterpillar climbs to the highest point of the tree and falls from a height. By this time, its body has had time to decompose to a sticky state. As it falls, the body breaks down, the virus hits the ground, and spreads into the environment. Western Honeybee Bees are very useful because they produce honey and pollinate flowers, but they're also vulnerable to zombie flies. These flies attack bees living on the west coast of the United States, as well as in South Dakota and Vermont. This fly finds the most vulnerable point on the body of the bee, digs a hole, and lays its eggs inside the bee's body. The infected bee becomes a dysfunctional zombie. It stops producing honey and leaves the colony. Its behavior resembles that of a nocturnal butterfly as it begins to reach for light sources. The hatching larvae feed on tissues and gradually deplete the bee. They then emerge from its body, climbing out in a specific spot behind the head, after which the bee dies. Tropical Ants One species of parasitic nematodes, called Myrmaconema neotropicum, affects tropical ants. Infected ants exhibit atypical ant behavior and even appearance. Healthy ants are black and have no other colors. Infested ants, on the other hand, are bright red. This makes them more noticeable to predators. In addition, the parasite manipulates its prey, turning it into a zombie and forcing it to leave the colony and climb high up tree trunks, which makes the ant an ideal target and virtually guarantees its death. In this way, the parasites get to end up in the bodies of birds. There, the larvae multiply, leave the body naturally, and thus spread to the environment. Deer and Moose Brain worms are extremely dangerous because they parasitize directly on brain cells. These parasites live in deer and do not cause them much harm. However, when they enter the bodies of other animals, for example moose, the picture changes dramatically. The moose brain is much more sensitive to these parasites. They cause irreversible brain damage. An infected animal can lose control over its behavior and turn into a real zombie. The moose can walk in circles all day long and have impaired motor skills and coordination of movements. Often, animals cannot stand on their feet, let alone search for food and shelter. Eventually, the moose dies. American Cockroach Few people know that cockroaches that cause so much trouble to homeowners are often prey of the parasitoid wasp species Ampulex compressa. When they reach maturity, these wasps can live independent lives for a while, but later they are forced to parasitize cockroaches in order to live a full life. The wasp injects poison into the cockroach's body, which has a paralyzing effect. The insect drags the paralyzed cockroach to a hiding place and lays its eggs. Cockroach turns into a zombie. It stops eating and loses its reflexes. The larvae feed on the tissues of the infected insect. Eventually, the cockroach dies and the larvae leave the body. Canine Distemper Canine distemper is a deadly viral disease that affects not only dogs but also many other mammals. An animal with canine distemper exhibits visible neurological abnormalities. The virus affects the gastrointestinal tract, respiratory organs, as well as the spinal cord and brain. Animals show red eyes, inflammation of the nasal mucosa, mucus secretions, diarrhea, lack of appetite, and apathy. In some countries, this virus is called the zombie virus because sick animals exhibit involuntary and convulsive muscle contractions. Very often, sick animals are disoriented and may walk in circles for hours. In animals that manage to survive, Neurological phenomena often persists for the rest of their lives. Rabies An animal infected with rabies virus is far more dangerous than the werewolves and vampires featured in various horror movies. This disease affects animals as well as humans. Lack of immediate treatment before onset of symptoms means certain death. Symptoms of rabies can vary widely. The most common are cramping of the muscles, salivation, and fear of water. The virus is found in large quantities in saliva, so a bite from a sick animal virtually guarantees infection. Worst of all, the disease causes sudden bursts of aggression, confusion, and motor dysfunction. The animal turns into a zombie that cannot be controlled. It may attack a person, another animal, or any inanimate object without a reason. All these symptoms are caused by severe damage to the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord. Zombie animals look creepy, so let's move on to something more positive. For example, to an adorable bear that begs for food from tourists, a dog that plays volleyball like a professional player, and other ingenious animals that amaze with their intelligence. Bear and Food 
We all love food, but sometimes we don't feel like cooking or going to the store for groceries. What's more, sometimes we don't even want to get up from the couch to go to the fridge. It's the same in the animal world, and this Hi. clever bear is perfect proof of that. It got up on its hind legs and started begging for bread from passing tourists. They couldn't resist such a kindness and shared the dainty with the bear. In general, this bear has become a local celebrity in the U.S. where it lives. It often begs tourists for food, and tourists, knowing about the superstar, always share food with the bear. The bear almost always waves its paws at tourists in return. It looks very cute. Oh, nice catch! Yeah! Bears in South Korea have a slightly more difficult time. These particular creatures from Everland Park are rarely given treats for nothing. They have to earn their food first. This clever bear has figured out how to get free food time after time. When a bus with tourists passes nearby, the bear stands up on its hind legs and flaunts itself at full breath. Sometimes it might even walk next to a passing bus. Every tactic works, the tourists can't resist, and every time they treat the industrious bear. And this bear is more into cars than food. It seems that it knows about cars very well. Look how it walks up to the Mercedes and confidently opens the door. This successful action of the clever bear really impressed the audience. People started shouting and admiring the animal. It was even taken aback and moved away from the car. And then it even ran away. Apparently, the bear motorist was too embarrassed by the increased attention. Feeding Let's move on to the no less intelligent creatures, monkeys. They're some of the most intelligent animals in the world. Monkeys are capable of many things like feeding other animals. That's exactly what's happening in this footage. We see a chimpanzee diligently feeding an apple to a turtle. The monkey takes a bite out of the apple and hands it to the reptile. It repeats these actions several times. Interestingly, the video shows that there's another monkey nearby, but the hero of the video shares the apple with the turtle and not with its congener. I wonder why so. While one monkey is feeding the turtle, the other monkey is mastering carpentry at its best. See how the primate skillfully manages the saw. The footage was filmed by the BBC. For the filming of the new episode, the female orangutan was given a saw and it immediately began to work using it. The animal did it confidently with the correct positioning of its hands and even blowing sawdust like a true master. Later, the crew made the task more difficult by placing a robot orangutan next to the monkey that also kind of sawed the log. With the help of a remote control, the team controlled the actions of the robot spy. Its face reflected different emotions. The female orangutan, noticing a competitor, continued sawing the branch, constantly glancing at its neighbor and comparing the result. The competition ended only when the living orangutan got tired. The monkey, yawning, got horizontal. That monkey seems to like its enclosure very much. Otherwise, why would it start sawing and improving something in its home, right? Hi. This primate, on the other hand, doesn't like its enclosure at all. So much so that it tries to make a daring escape. Footage taken in 2019 at the zoo in Zhengzhou, China, shows a capuchin monkey taking a rock and trying to break glass with its pointed side. Amazingly, the glass cracked after only a couple of blows. Freedom was so close, but for some reason the monkey decided not to finish what it had started and ran away. Either it was afraid or it just wanted to check the glass for strength. Or maybe the animals softened up the ground for the real escape. Which do you think is true? Towel Monkeys never cease to amaze with their genius. The following footage is yet another proof of the primate's incredible intelligence, as we see an orangutan fighting the heat. That's right, it wipes itself with a towel. And its actions are very logical, because before it wipes itself, it dips the towel in water and then wrings it out. It looks very impressive, however its congener apparently has not yet mastered this technique. It escapes from the heat with the simplest method, gradually quenching its thirst. It's not only monkeys and bears that can be called intelligent animals that demonstrate genius moments. There are other intelligent individuals in the animal world. Stay tuned to see dog athletes, cat thieves that will surprise you, 
and even a crow advocating for nature. Volleyball The lockdown that took everyone by surprise two years ago changed a lot of things. People had to stay home and dogs had to learn to play volleyball. Well, at least one dog did. The Norwegian beach volleyball player Matthias Bernsen taught his dog his sport within weeks. The reason was simple. Matthias' partner was in quarantine, so the guy had to look for a new partner urgently. The dog handled the new role with flying colors. As you can see, it handled the ball at a very professional level. This dog, on the other hand, was clearly playing with a ball too long, so much so that it landed almost in the middle of the pool. This dog either couldn't swim or didn't like to, so it came up with an ingenious solution to the problem. It pulled up a floating board, stood on it, gently reached the ball, took it and came off the edge. Of course, it didn't come out of the water completely dry, but it was better than getting completely soaked trying to fetch the ball, right? Car wash It turns out that not only do cars come to the car wash, but animals do too. At least that's what a dog named Linda does. Linda regularly comes to the car wash to get her fur in order. Well, or Linda does it for fun. She obviously likes big brushes. Either way, she got used to the splash of water a long time ago. People at the car wash know Linda and don't chase her away. And why would they chase her away? After all, according to the owners of the car wash, the dog obeys the safety rules and does not get under the wheels of cars. Against Trash Unfortunately, the trash problem is one of the key problems in the modern world. Many people litter without thinking about the consequences, and as a result, cities gradually become polluted. Fortunately, they're gradually being cleaned by environmentalists, volunteers, and pros. A few years ago, an Indian filmed an amazing example of human behavior from an animal on the streets of his hometown. A crow found a plastic bottle, picked it up, and threw it into a trash can. Amazingly, the crow even chose the right trash can for it, which was designated specifically for plastic waste. If all people behaved the same way, then we could forget about the trash problem forever. Thirst There are regular videos on the internet that show how smart cats are. Another member of the feline family has clearly demonstrated how it copes with a lack of a drinker bowl. It doesn't need a bowl or an owner to pour its water, because this cat easily drinks cool water from the office cooler. It knows exactly how the cooler works and how to use it. No thirst can scare such an ingenious cat. While some cats are saving from thirst, others are trying not to starve to death. And what to do if there's no one to hunt on and people don't give food for nothing? They have no choice but to steal. The two thieves work according to a well-known scheme. One keeps a lookout and the other one steals. Once the dainties received, the criminals leave the store. Well done. Cleaning The vacuum cleaner is a very cool invention that's turned the lives of a huge number of people around. However, not everyone likes vacuum cleaners. <laughs> For example, this pet pig is clearly not happy with the strange humming gadget, so it walks behind it and pulls the cord out of the socket. It's unclear whether the pig doesn't like the noise or the fact that the vacuum cleaner cleans its habitat. Either way, the animal was smart enough to try to solve the problem on its own. Merry-go-round Goats are a lot smarter than you think, and this footage proves it. We see a baby goat jumping on a bobbin, after which its mother goat begins to spin it. A couple of seconds and the bobbin has already become a real merry-go-round to have a great time on. It's not for nothing they say that every mother knows how to cheer up her child. Mother goats know it too. Animals can be not only cute and funny, but also incredibly dangerous and ruthless. Next in this episode, I'll show you the strongest, fastest, and fiercest birds in the world. Golden Eagle The Golden Eagle is a real weapon, and a living one at that. It's hard not to fear and respect this bird. The Golden Eagle is the largest eagle in the world and an amazing bird of prey, belonging to the Ecipitridae family. Its wingspan reaches almost two and a half meters, and its weight reaches seven kilograms. At the same time, the golden eagle can grow to almost a meter in length. This is very impressive for a flying bird, but that's not all. The golden eagle can boast powerful paws with sharp claws, as well as incredible speed. Having spotted its prey, the golden eagle dives after it and can reach speeds up to 320 kilometers per hour. Even a speedy cheetah will seem like a snail in comparison with this bird. 
Here a golden eagle is hunting a hare. It doesn't even have to develop a monstrous speed. The golden eagle is flying relatively calmly after the hare while it's running away at full speed. But it's no use running away from the golden eagle. The bird captures its prey easily. The situation here is approximately the same. The white hare takes it on the lamb, but the golden eagle calmly flies up to its prey and neutralizes it. Hares make up a large part of the golden eagle's diet, but these birds also prey on larger creatures, for example, foxes. In this footage, the fox is trying to fight off the bird. Notice how huge the golden eagle is in comparison with the not insignificant fox, but all in vain. The golden eagle got its claw into the victim's body and the fox immediately fell down. The golden eagle, on the other hand, continued to press on the wound, neutralizing the victim to the end. Not only foxes and hares, but even wolves are afraid of these winged killers. It's hard to believe that a bird at all can cope with such a dangerous and large animal, but the golden eagle manages it. Although this footage is not of the best quality, we can see how a golden eagle dives masterfully at a wolf, knocking it down. The footage soon cuts off, but it appears that the golden eagle didn't let go of the wolf, but just continued to sink its claws into its prey. Golden eagles often hunt in the mountains. There they can not only dive on their opponents or catch them between rocks, but also finish them off in a more sophisticated way. Golden eagles pick up large prey and throw it off the cliff. Then the only thing to do is to fly up to the body and start eating. Fortunately, golden eagles have a neutral relationship with people. Golden eagles are even wary of humans and do not settle near residential areas, so these birds almost never attack humans. But sometimes it still happens. For example, in this footage, a golden eagle attacked a girl in Kyrgyzstan. Apparently, it saw her as prey. Luckily, there were adults nearby who chased the bird away. The girl herself, though, sustained several injuries recovered very quickly. As you can see, golden eagles attack just about anyone. Peregrine falcons are pickier in this regard. They are also very dangerous birds. The peregrine falcon is, of course, inferior to the golden eagle in size, reaching 50 centimeters in length and 120 centimeters in wingspan. But this bird of prey of the falcon's family is ahead of the golden eagle in speed. It's the fastest bird on the planet. The peregrine falcon can reach speeds of over 322 kilometers per hour during a dive. The peregrine falcon has very sharp and strong claws. If during the hunt the peregrine falcon does not miss, then the impact of such claws at insane speeds guarantees death. Even big game may have its head blown off after such an attack. But the peregrine falcon rarely attacks large animals. Unlike the golden eagle, it hunts practically only birds and it does it very professionally. Look how beautifully a peregrine falcon cuts the path of a pigeon and catches it right on the fly. This pigeon is definitely not alive anymore. The camera hardly keeps up with the movements of the peregrine falcon that spotted a new prey, another bird. It didn't manage to catch it on the counterattack, the prey dodged. The peregrine falcon turned around and sharply caught the bird and dragged it to the nest to feed its young. And here's another example of a typical peregrine falcon hunt. As a rule, it doesn't chase its prey, it stalks it, and then lifts up over the prey and swiftly dives down, striking the prey with its claws. Usually such tactics are enough to kill the prey, but if it proves to be a survivor, the peregrine falcon can always finish it off right in flight with its beak. In this footage, a peregrine falcon efficiently destroys a red-tailed hawk in its trademark style. Upward rush, downward dive, and powerful blow. It was made clearly and cleanly. The red-tailed hawk body immediately flew to the ground where the peregrine falcon ate it. Crowned Eagle By the way, I forgot to say that peregrine falcons are common on all continents except Antarctica. But the crowned eagle is found only in Africa. Here it's considered the king of all birds. In general, the crowned eagle is often included in the list of the most dangerous birds on the planet. This amazing bird of prey weighs about 7 kilograms and has a 2-meter wingspan. Like the golden eagle and the peregrine falcon, it has very powerful claws and lightning-fast attacks. All this helps the crowned eagle to hunt even such large animals as monkeys. Usually, the crowned eagle stalks its prey while sitting in a tree. When it sees suitable prey, it jumps off the branch and quickly flies down. 
but sometimes it takes off to fly through dense trees, as in this case with the monkey. Despite its huge wings and many obstacles in the form of branches and leaves, the eagle masterfully captures its prey. Not too heavy prey is carried by the crowned eagle to a nest or high up in a tree where it eats it completely, along with the bones. By the way, these birds are not only elite and ruthless predators, but also amazing dancers. With the beginning of the nesting period, the male is the first to perform the mating dance. If the female likes the dance, it joins the dancer. It's as if the birds are playing with each other. The male flies toward the female and it stretches its claws forward. They claw together and perform acrobatic tricks in the air. It looks cool. Harpy Eagle The Harpy Eagle, on the other hand, is not such a fan of dancing. It just wants to hunt. This bird is named after the ancient Greek harpies for a reason. These predatory creatures are first-class assassins, keeping air and ground dwellers in fear. The South American Harpy Eagle belongs to the Ecipetridae family. It's believed to be the heaviest eagle in the world because the Harpy Eagle weighs up to 9 kilograms. The Harpy Eagle is not as fast as the Golden Eagle or the Peregrine Falcon, but it makes up for its speed by brute force and ruthlessness. South American Harpy Eagles easily hunt big creatures. Their main meal is sloths. As you understand, it's not difficult to capture such a slow creature, but the Harpy Eagle does it with particular elegance. See for yourself. A perfect abduction and a terrific hunt. Like the crowned eagle, the Harpy Eagle is not averse to eating monkeys. The principle of the hunt is similar. The South American Eagle stalks its prey, plummets from the tree and flies to it through branches and leaves, grabbing the monkey firmly. After that, the Harpy Eagle can drag the body to the nest, where it shares a treat with its chicks or eats it itself. These birds of prey nest very high in the crowns of up to 75 meters above the ground. By the way, the hunting territory of these birds extends over dozens of square kilometers, so any animal in the territory risks becoming prey to the threatening eagle. And once just two harpy eagles kept an entire island of monkeys at bay. Scientists took two of them to borrow Colorado Island in the Panama Canal. The place was a paradise for great numbers of primates until a couple of birds of prey arrived. The harpy eagles began to hunt the apes, so much so that the apes had to fight their way out. Eventually, the apes learned to communicate with each other, using distinctive sounds to alert them of the approaching feathered predators. When the harpy eagle was spotted, the males cried out loudly, and the females and babies hurried to hide in the bushes. Such unusual monkey signaling saved the primates, and their population on Barrow, Colorado Island did not become extinct. And one more bird in this episode. It looks like this. It's called a pitahui. It's quite a small bird, weighs not so much, and its wingspan is obviously not the same as that of golden eagles. Nevertheless, this bird is dangerous enough, and all because it's poisonous. Yeah, as it turns out, there are poisonous birds in the world, and pitahui is one of the few. The poison of these New Guinean creatures is not self-produced. Pitahuis get it from their diet by eating special bugs. As a result, they produce batrachotoxin, the same poison as the golden poison frogs, which are bright, beautiful, but highly toxic creatures. Pitahuis themselves are not affected by the poison. The bird's organism is adapted to it, but for other creatures, Pitahuis is a dangerous creature. Getting into the body of small animals, Pitahuis poison can kill it in minutes. Especially it's not easy for monkeys, monitor lizards, and some representatives of the felines. They often become victims of pitahuis. The poison of these birds is also dangerous for humans, although it's not considered lethal. But the consequences are still not pleasant. The toxic poison of birds causes burning, numbness of limbs, and even paralysis. The good news is that pitahui doesn't attack people, and it's extremely difficult to catch the bird because it has excellent reaction and high flight speed. Some of the most dangerous birds are eagles. Let's take a closer look at the confrontations of these birds with goats, crocodiles, bears, and even lions. Eagles hunt both on land and water. In this video, an eagle literally snatches a young crocodile out of the water as an adult female crocodile takes its young for a walk in the river. The impetuous attack comes as a complete surprise to it, 
We see it jumping out of the water, trying to reach the predator, flying over it and save the baby, but it doesn't succeed. After catching its prey, the eagle sits down on a branch and immediately starts eating. By the way, there are about 60 species of eagles in nature. They belong to the Ocipitridae family. The greatness of this bird, its strength, agility and endurance have earned it fame and respect. Ancient people relied on these birds to choose their habitat. According to Aztec legend, the god Huitzilopochtli foretold the Aztecs, who were searching for land to live on, that they should find an eagle sitting on a rocky spot on top of a cactus and devouring a snake. When they found this eagle, they settled there and erected the first temple there in honor of their patron god, Huitzilopochtli. The eagle is now depicted in the middle of the Mexican flag and on the national emblem. An eagle attacks a snake. As you know, snakes are not the most harmless creatures, and most people would prefer to stay away from them. However, eagles don't mind eating reptiles. This footage shows a confrontation between an eagle and a cobra. We see that the snake is not going to give up. It spreads its hood threateningly and fiercely resists. But the eagle's agility, calculation and physical strength do the trick. Eventually, it pins the victim to the ground and strikes with its beak until the snake stops resisting. Spotting a snake somewhere in the grass is not difficult for an eagle. Eagles are known for their keen eyesight and can spot prey at a distance of many miles. In flight, they can cover an area of 4.6 square miles. Thanks to the huge number of light-sensitive cells in the retina, the birds can distinguish a large number of shades and perceive ultraviolet light. It also allows them to spot prey that's trying to hide. These birds can circle over it at a height of several hundred feet, looking out for game and choosing the most convenient moment to attack. In addition, eagles can focus on two objects simultaneously. By the way, the maximum flight height of an eagle can reach 4.3 to 5.5 miles. Not even all airplanes can fly that high. Attack against the goat. Eagles are born masters of flying at ground level. They can spend hours circling over an area looking for prey that's not even aware that it's in its crosshairs. This footage shows an eagle attacking a goat. We see it coming down on the animal from above, clawing at its back with its sharp claws. At one point, it may seem as if the bird has saddled the goat and is riding it. The victim desperately resists, trying to slip out of the predator's claws, and it succeeds. The video shows one of the rare moments when a hunt ends in failure for the eagle. This time, the goat was lucky not to fall prey to the eagle and escape. But this case is an exception to the rule. Eagles are perfect predators, and as a rule, they get their job done. Eagle versus Deer in the world of wildlife, it's hard to find a more vulnerable animal than the deer. It's hunted by almost all large predators, and eagles are no exception. This video proves that the strength, agility, and ferocity of these birds know no bounds. Seeing a young deer in the open, the eagle that's been watching it for a long time falls on top of it, sinks its claws into the deer's neck, and carries it away. Eagle versus Hare the outcome of this unequal confrontation is already evident. The hare is trying to escape from the attacking eagle. Its only chance to escape is given by its strong paws, which help it develop quite high speed. But the eagle skillfully uses the least expectation line, and the hare is hit before it can find shelter. The eagle catches up with it, sinks its sharp claws into its body, and the victim falls backward. Eagle versus Warthog the warthog is a mammal of the pig's family. These animals are very vulnerable to attack by predators, including eagles. In this footage, eagles strike as the warthog family was taking a meal. When encountering enemies, warthogs rarely engage in battle and prefer to flee. As long as they're confident on their feet, they do not use their sharp fangs. One of the warthog piglets was unlucky. It failed to escape from the eagle. We see the eagle literally dragging the defeated piglet across the road with one paw. Eagle versus Monkeys This is the Harpy Eagle, one of the heaviest eagles in the world. It's obviously hungry and looking for prey. It's targeting a group of monkeys nearby. As the monkeys take their food, the bird makes an attack. 
The monkey spotted the bird of prey and began jumping from one tree to another, trying to distract and confuse the enemy. But this was no problem for the bird of prey because, as I said, eagles are able to focus on two objects at the same time. At some moment, it may seem that the harpy eagle missed, but no way. The monkey is already in the harpy eagle's claws. The bird grabs it and carries it into the tree with it. Eagle versus Flamingo In these shots, we see a flamboyance resting near the shore of a body of water. The birds are calmly swimming and pacing near the shore, unaware of the impending danger. Suddenly, they are attacked by a bald eagle. Noticing the danger, flamingos scatter, but there are so many of them that they cannot move far away from each other, so catching a flamingo is not a problem for the eagle. This eagle attacked a flamingo that was at some distance from the flamboyance. There are several other eagles nearby, so this flamingo is probably not the last victim of this confrontation. On the whole, the outcome of the battle is not surprising, as eagles are very large birds. Their wingspan can reach about 8.1 feet. At the same time, eagles are at the top of the food chain. The only serious threat to them is the destruction of the natural environment and starvation. The fact is that eagles nest in tall trees and rocks, which makes their nests inaccessible to predators. During the mating season, they perform various figures in the air, attracting each other. These birds are monogamous, couples stay together for many years. The relations between spouses are built according to the classical scheme. A female watches over the nest and offspring while the male is busy hunting for food. As a rule, a couple gives birth to two chicks a year. They start hunting at the age of three months and live quite long. About 30 years, while well, some species live as long as 50 or even 60 years. Eagle versus Seagulls For eagles, which can see prey from several miles away, seagulls are fairly easy targets because they have bright plumage and are clearly visible from a distance. An eagle in the vicinity looks out for prey and prepares to attack. Here it flies down and grabs the first bird it sees. What happens next is quite obvious. Eagle versus Bear And this eagle decided on the impossible mission of attacking a grizzly bear. It's one of the largest bears on the planet. Such a move on the part of the eagle seems completely insane, and it's not entirely clear what the bird was counting on when it confronted this beast. We see the eagle attacking from a low-flying position and striking the head of the predator that, unsuspecting, goes about its business. Apparently, realizing that the hunt will not be successful for it, the eagle decided not to continue the attack and flew on. The bear felt the blow, but before it realized what had happened, the bird had already disappeared into the distance. Eagle versus Lions Everyone knows that the lion is the king of the jungle. But eagles do not recognize any title. This eagle had its keen eye on the lion's pride. Both adult lions and cubs were present. Despite the rainy weather, the eagle waits patiently for the right moment. Once the adults are on the one side and the cubs are on the other, the eagle decides to attack. This bird has chosen an unusual tactic. It decides to attack not from the air but from the ground. The eagle slowly sneaks up on the lion cubs, which have already spotted it and become curious. Then they begin to do what they do all the time at this age, play with it. The cubs take turns attacking and the eagle offers resistance. In this case, the lion cubs had a great opportunity to practice hunting. Luckily for them, the eagle was not too strong. Then the adult lioness got involved. This time the luck was not on the side of the eagle. Well, the lion cubs can be congratulated on their first ever successful hunt. Today they deserve a delicious lunch. Speaking of lions, their predatory abilities and organization in the pride are admirable, but at the same time, the structure of the lion's pride is frustrating because things that happen to some lions can make you feel uncomfortable. Let's dive into the world of these amazing big cats and learn about its dark side. How does pride work? Before we find out why lions don't have a rosy picture of life, let's take a look at their collective. Lions are the only big cats that have such an ambiguous social organization as a pride. This phenomenon can be easily explained. First, lions are large predators and they choose their prey in accordance with themselves. As a rule, their targets are large ungulates such as buffalo, zebra, warthogs, or wildebeest. Surely it's not easy to defeat them alone. 
Secondly, these big cats, unlike, for example, a solitary tiger that prefers forest, live in the open savanna expanses. In such conditions, it's much easier to live and hunt effectively together. Also, it should be mentioned that the king of the jungle is not very hardy. Yes, it runs fast, but only for short distances. The big cat won't be able to chase its prey for a long time, so it definitely needs help. Prides usually consist of several females, children, and of course, the male. It may not even be the strongest, but its leadership is not disputed by others. In rare cases, a few mature males may coexist in a pride, but only one of them will be dominant. It's the alpha male. Pride population may reach 30 to 40 animals. By the way, it's among the lionesses that equality reigns. Their relations can be called friendly. Moreover, the lionesses in the pride are close relatives. Plus, the nursing lionesses can also feed other cubs and protect them if the mother of these cubs is on the hunt. Is exile inevitable? So the cubs are growing up, becoming young lions, and that means they begin to claim supremacy. Therefore, at the age of two to two and a half years, they're simply exiled from the pride. No one will accept them back. The lion, though young, now relies only on itself. Thus, exiled lions may either create their own pride or live alone in a small bachelor groups for two to three years. These groups have up to seven lions, which are usually brothers or cousins. What happens then in such a complex life of males? Is it true that in the life of lions, things don't go so well and easy? Unfortunately, yes. In part, the life of lions is not bad, but only when they're young and healthy. That is, they're in the full vigor of life and strength. It's unfortunate, but it's a harsh truth of life. The best time in their lives is the first five to ten years. After that time comes old age, and the younger generation begins to demand the road. What awaits the lion is retirement. There's no other way to put it, but do you think lions really want to retire on their own? Of course not. A stronger lion simply comes and unobtrusively, no, I would even say it obtrusively asks the animal to leave. To put it bluntly, the old lion is exiled again. At about the age of five to six years, the mature male, full of strength and energy that was once so heartlessly exiled from the pride, returns. Now the similar lions are with it. They have already formed a peculiar alliance. Together with its fellows in misery, it takes over the pride and chases away or kills the less powerful or older leader. That's some kind of ingratitude to the elders, don't you think? For some time, the lionesses are wary of the new members of the pride, but over time they get used to them and accept them. And another sad fact, when new males take over the pride, they often kill strange male lion cubs. They don't touch the females for quite logical reasons, because these are the future mothers of their children. Sometimes the lion's harem is left without a head of the family, and then the females can only sit and wait until a new leader arrives. In all likelihood, it'll be a strong young lion that's already left its ancestral home, but has not got its own family yet. The fate of cubs in such cases is similar. Lions do not practice adoption, and the first thing the new head of the family will do is get rid of all the cubs of its predecessor. This is how some lions are exiled, while others literally become kings and thus begin their lives. Most of the time, the lions sleep or spend their time waiting for an invitation to dinner. On the contrary, lionesses are active all the time. They have to hunt and raise their cubs. Of course, sometimes the lion takes part in the hunt as well, but mainly when it comes to large prey. The main duty of the head of the pride is to always be ready to defend the territory from competing lions. So the head of the pride needs to conserve strength, eat well, and sleep a lot. This is quite logical because the territory of the pride can occupy dozens of square kilometers. Here, for example, a harem of five lionesses and seven cubs resting peacefully by the river while a couple of wandering males approach them unnoticed. The lions attack, trying to chase the females out of their territory and take their prey. Soon, the strong and hungry males chase the lionesses toward the river and return to their meal. Life After Exile If the lions that have seized power live happily, then for those that have been exiled from the pride, everything is very painful. They have a real and incredibly serious psychological trauma. After all, it turns out that such humiliation they experience as much as twice. But since the lion is still alive, it must move on, no matter how bad things were in its life. 
Now the lion relies only on itself, on its mind and strength. And since it's already of age, it will not try to find a new pride because it's illogical. The lion has to hunt by itself, fight off pesky hyenas by itself, and hide from buffaloes and elephants. So in fact, these lions can only be sympathized because the lives of males are shorter than those of lionesses. Moreover, the lion, expelled from the pride and having much less opportunities for successful hunting, weakens and loses weight every day. Eventually, the lonely, decrepit lion dies very quickly. Hunger, illness, wounds received in fights from other lonely but younger males, all these facts inevitably affect its health. The once formidable predator, which proudly bore the title of King of the Jungle, finds its death in the teeth of spotted hyenas or other animals that do not mind tasting the lion meat. And sometimes large herbivores settle old scores with these lions. This is how the life of many savanna lions passes. Here was life, and now its end has come. Now you better understand how a lion's pride is organized and what male lions have to deal with. But that's not all to say about the kings of the jungle. Stay tuned for more interesting facts about these majestic big cats that will surprise you. How to Survive Lions get their food in three ways. They hunt for themselves, take their prey from other predators, or may eat animals that have died of disease or died of old age. It doesn't matter whether the carcass is fresh or slightly decomposed, whether it's large or small, whether they hunted it themselves or simply found it. Prey is always important for a lion because it guarantees its survival. Not surprisingly, old, exiled lions become exhausted pretty quickly. Being alone, they simply lack the strength to attack. They'll be lucky if they find already dead prey. In general, a lion needs to eat 7 to 8 kilograms of meat per day to feed itself, although the king of the jungle can eat up to 30 kilograms at a time. Eating I've already told you that it's usually the female lionesses that hunt. By the way, young lions are taught to hunt by females. As a rule, the smaller prey is eaten on the spot and the larger prey is taken to the family to be served to the head of the pride. These big cats have a strict order of the prey eating. As expected, the dominant male cat is the first to feast. It usually doesn't share it with anyone, and it might not even take part in the hunt. These are cruel and unfair laws of these big cats' communities. If the game is plentiful and the king of the jungle is not too hungry, then the other members of the pride may also be allowed to join the feast. Lionesses, by the way, do not show maternal self-sacrifice. They can fiercely chase the cubs away until they're sated themselves. The cubs are the last to eat if there's anything left for them. But the dominant male can make sure that they get at least some leftovers. Here, in general, such a picture emerges that adults are more valuable for survival than young animals. But such is life. The population is declining. Back in 1980, there were about 75,000 lions on the planet. And now the International Union for Conservation of Nature estimates their global population to be between 23,000 and 39,000 individuals. The population is declining, and there are several factors for it. Poaching, hunting, lack of food, and human encroachment into habitats. If this trend continues in 10 to 15 years, there will be no more than 10,000 lions in all of Africa. But let's not talk about the sad stuff anymore. No matter how cruel their laws, no matter how harshly they deal with young lions, and especially with the elderly, lions are and will remain the kings of the jungle. A lot of factors can be cited in favor of this. Let's start with the obvious things. Appearance and manners. The luxurious mane, resembling a crown, regal posture, and haughty look. This representative of the feline family demonstrates confidence, majesty, and calmness with all its appearance. By the way, the older the lion, the thicker the mane becomes. Secondly, whatever the case, the organization of their coexistence is astonishing. After all, this can only be seen among lions. The male is the real head of the family that tries to take care of the pride, protects the cubs and the females, and defends the boundaries of its territory. Male lions are ready to fight for their land to the death. Since ancient times, humans have revered these predators. This is reflected in many aspects of human culture. The lion is depicted in paintings and coats of arms, sculpted or embroidered on carpets. In Africa, the lion is considered a symbol of supreme divine power, and in Europe, it's a symbol of power which embodies the power of the sun. 
course, this animal also represents courage, dignity, and nobility. And in China, Japan, and Korea, since ancient times, there is a special mythical creature, the so-called Chinese guardian lion. Statues of such lions were placed in front of temple entrances, like Gari. We found out how the kings of the jungle pass away. Their fate is unenviable. But some animal species show care and compassion for their dying congeners, and afterwards they mourn their demise. Let's take a look at this. How Elephants Say Goodbye Elephants are capable of establishing close kinship ties and expressing many emotions. Scientists have learned about a peculiar ritual that elephants perform after the death of their congeners relatively recently. Usually, researchers have to observe the following picture. Dad, come on. You gotta get up. Dad, we gotta go home. Seeing the body of a fellow elephant, elephants carefully touch it with their trunks or try to put it on its feet. But as soon as the animals realize that the elephant shows no signs of life, they start trumpeting, making a big noise, and then suddenly fall silent. After that, they usually begin to bury the deceased. They throw leaves and soil on it, trying to completely cover the body of the deceased. In the next couple of days, the elephant will visit the grave. There have been cases where elephants put their foot over the body or surround the deceased with a mourning guard and don't leave the burial place for a long time. Moreover, elephants perform this ritual not only after the death of a member of their family group, but also after the death of an outsider which remains they accidentally encountered on their way. Scientists have no doubt that elephants are aware of the phenomenon of death and have a range of feelings about it, but there are too many behaviors to bring to a common standard. Scientists at Colorado State University have presented a rare video of a group of elephants from Samburu National Reserve in Kenya saying goodbye to the head of the group, an elderly elephant named Victoria. Biologists explain that in the wild, elephants very rarely die of old age. In most cases, the lives of these animals are ended by poachers. Victoria, born in 1958, was lucky to live a long and happy life. For many years, she led a large group of elephants in the reserve. This family clan was conventionally called the Royal Family by scientists and each member was named after some royal figure from human history. After Victoria's death, the next oldest elephant, her sister Cleopatra, became the head of the group. Victoria passed away in June 2013 and her body was rather quickly devoured by predators. But her congeners, not just her family but two others, approached the remains paying their respects. And the young ones sniffed the bones. Perhaps this is how elephants become familiar with the phenomenon of death. The phenomenon of death is familiar not only to elephants. For example, dolphins, which like elephants are considered to be very intelligent animals, grieve just as bitterly for their congeners. Stay tuned to see how dolphins pay their congeners last respects, as well as to see the funeral rites of chimpanzees, crows, killer whales, and even ants. How Dolphins Say Goodbye On May 6, 2000, Divers spotted a dead female dolphin near the east coast of Mikurajima Island, Japan. Two adult males were constantly near the body, leaving it only briefly to rise to the surface and take a breath. Since the cause of death was unknown, divers attempted to retrieve the body. However, the presence of two males constantly interfered with them. The dolphins didn't allow them closer than about six feet. Returning the next day and making another attempt, the researchers found the same two males guarding the female. On the third day, the body was gone. She's gone. The researchers assumed that it had simply swum away into deeper water. Earlier in April 2001, another group of scientists noticed a dead baby dolphin near the Canary Islands. It was also surrounded by several other dolphins, one of which was presumably its mother. By the third day, the calf was floating on the surface of the water. And although scientists did not try to extract the body, they noted that whenever any seabird tried to get close to the floating calf, it was immediately driven away by other dolphins. Since this group of dolphins was under the constant supervision of people, the researchers could say with certainty that these sea creatures did not behave as usual. They swam more slowly, trying to stay in the same place. All these observations suggested that they were reacting specifically to the death of the calf. In each case, the dolphins present worked together to prevent others from approaching the body and showed signs of aggression to those who tried to do so. 
In each of the cases described, the dolphins departed from their typical behavior, which means that they have their own funeral traditions. How Chimpanzees Say Goodbye There are many descriptions of chimpanzee mothers having a hard time partnering with the body of their dead infants, but there is almost no information about how other members of the group react to the death. This is sad. Very sad only. Come to think of it, chimpanzees develop a complex system of social ties, not just family ties. A few years ago, chimpanzee researchers at Shimfunshi Nature Reserve in Zambia filmed how the monkeys behaved after the death of a nine-year-old member of the community. The male chimpanzee named Thomas had been living in a group of 43 monkeys all these years. Over the course of his life, he made many connections. Orphaned at the age of five, he became particularly close friends with an adult male named Pan, who became his adoptive father. Pan returned to Thomas's body several times and protected him from attacks when necessary. Other members of the group also visited Thomas's body. They sat nearby for long periods of time and were not distracted by the treats offered to them by the Nature Reserve staff. A total of 22 monkeys visited the body of the dead congener. Nine of them lightly touched Thomas's body, and one female then touched her own lips. At some point, one of the main females of the group named Violet appeared. She approached Thomas's body and struck him. Perhaps she was testing to see if he was able to react. The other monkey, female, Noelle, was brushing the dead monkey's teeth. Such a behavior rarely seen in chimpanzees. She also preferred this activity to the treats offered to her by the nature reserve staff. How Crows Say Goodbye Crows, or rather all birds of the crow family, which includes jays, magpies, and common ravens, are some of the most intelligent animals on the planet. They are able to work together cohesively. They have complex social behavior, but they can get angry, take revenge, and even have fun by rolling off smooth, slippery surfaces. But they do have one right that can be frightening. Folks call it a crow funeral. Whenever a crow dies, the other local crows fly to its body, surround the body, and begin to make loud mocking noises. They don't leave the deceased immediately, but only when they've shouted enough and walked around it. This phenomenon has long puzzled scientists because it's quite unclear what it is. A manifestation of higher mental activity of crows? Or something else, similar to a funeral, only in appearance? For two years, a group of scientists observed a group of crows and their behavior when they found a dead crow. It turns out that the birds do, in fact, understand what death is and their behavior differs from an overwhelming number of other animals. According to an experiment conducted in 2008, crows are excellent at remembering the faces of certain people and remembering them even after several years have passed. Another study showed that crows brought gifts only to those people who fed them. However, scientists have not been able to unequivocally answer the question of what moves the birds, gathered to mourn a congener. Perhaps it's natural instinct. Or maybe animals really have the ability to grieve. How Killer Whales Say Goodbye In the summer of 2018, marine biologists spotted a 20-year-old orca named Taliqua, mourning a dead calf on the surface of the water off the coast of British Columbia. The calf died half an hour after being born, but even days after the loss, Taliqua could not return to normal life. Holding the calf's body by its fin and nudging it with her head, she swam more than a thousand miles along the coast of British Columbia and the North American state of Washington. Each time the calf's body slipped and began to sink, the female had to take six or seven deep breaths and a deep dive to bring it back to the surface. Continuing to observe the animal's behavior, scientists noticed that Taliqua began to stay away from the other orcas and her family and stopped hunting. Scientists feared that such a long mourning period, not previously seen in her relatives, could indicate serious psychological problems, which means that even after saying goodbye to the baby, Taliqua might not be able to respond adequately to the daily challenges she faces in her habitat. How Ants Say Goodbye A few years ago, a video appeared on the web that surprised users. In a solemn atmosphere, ants buried a bumblebee. The footage shows the insects dragging flower petals to the burial site. The video is shot by a Minnesota resident in her backyard. She was the first to make the assumption that she's observing the burial process. 
However, in this case, there's really no special ritual in the ant's behavior. It turns out that when the insects die, their carcasses secrete oleic acid. The ants react negatively to it, so they try to put something under the dead insect to mask the smell. That's it for today. What from this episode impressed you the most? Let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching.